Hi and welcome back, you're with Terry Erasmus and today I'm going to be styling this uh, wild olive uh, that belongs to a customer of mine. It has a little bit of a story to it. Um, this tree when I first started working on it a couple of years ago was rather in a sickly way and uh, the customer has uh, really been very diligent about nursing it back to health and uh, the tree has responded very well and it has really uh, grown in strength quite tremendously. Uh, what was difficult for the customer to do was to allow the growth that did develop as a result of the tree's renewed vigor just to develop. So in other words, we had uh, quite lengthy sacrifice branches running into a meter or more. Uh, it looked like a bush <laughs> and uh, in fact I couldn't even get the tree into my van when I collected it. We're just going into winter so the olives typically at this time of the year start to get a, a, a bit of a growth spurt and so I want to take advantage of that by pruning the tree back properly now. Very often with trees of uh, collected olives particularly of this sort of size that I see a lot of because the material uh, is quite plentiful where we are uh, in South Africa. Olives, wild olives can be dug all over the place. Um, but what I find a, a, a lot is branches, um, your primary branch structure, people uh, neglect to spend sufficient time on developing the girth of that. And so you have these very impressive powerful trunks but you have very spindly little branches coming out of them. One of the nice uh, characteristics or features of this tree is that somebody has taken some time to develop these branches and I think also just with, uh, with age, I don't know how old the tree has been uh, or how many years it's been cultivated as a bonsai but I would suggest it's been quite a number of years. And uh, this shows in the girth of the branches. So that's very important um, that I, I just to mention at this point in time, if, you're, if you have a Yamadori olive that you're developing as bonsai, don't be in too much of a rush to develop the canopy, rather develop, go through the stages systematically of developing your structural branches and then start going into the secondary and tertiaries and develop your, your, your ramification and your canopy. These trees do respond to the clip and grow technique um, very well. What you'll find is that the branches grow at a very, uh, the well it, it'll obviously depend on the genetics perhaps of the, 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 the price, precise tree that you have but generally these branches will grow very much at right angles to one another if you're going to be clipping to uh, dormant buds because the leaves are opposite to one another. Um, so you generally do need to apply some wire. I will also be looking for problem areas where you have multiple branches growing from a single growth point. Um, so we have more than two for instance. Um, what eventually that will cause if you allow those branches to develop in the long term is that you'll form these fist like uh, growths and so you'll have a reverse taper along that branch. Um, sometimes it's okay you know if you don't catch it immediately it's not a problem because it's going to take a bit of time for that fault to actually develop. Um, so if you're looking for perhaps a little bit of extra a sap flow to thicken the, the structure of the branch or maybe healing over an area although olives don't heal very well at all um, but if there's some particular reason that you're looking to keep uh, additional um, branchlets or branches in an area then it's fine but you do need to be mindful that you need to eliminate those additional or superfluous branches um, as soon as possible otherwise before they become before they start creating problems. Part of my focus will also be on directing some of the growth that is uh, growing to the interior of the tree or at um, less than desirable angles uh, for instance this branch that is just growing straight down uh, I like to wire that into a better position um, branches that are growing on the interior to bend them out um, so that they are they make more sense in terms of the direction that they're growing which will be towards the sunlight. Uh, branches won't normally grow on into the interior of the tree in, in a natural tree um, but in bonsai they often will do that because um, there is sufficient sun because there's uh, space in the canopy um, in which to develop. Uh, I've completed defoliating the tree, although I didn't defoliate it entirely. 
The idea is really just to open up the structure of the tree so that it makes it a lot easier for wiring to be done. Um, so the idea is not to strip all the leaves off the tree, but rather to um, remove the inner leaves and keep leaves at the tip just to encourage a little bit of sap flow that way as well. The next step will be to go through the tree and remove branches that will obviously not be needed for the future or going forward with the structure of the tree. And then also something that's quite important and quite useful to know. Sometimes when you're building the structure of the tree, you always want, want to be working with the most energetic branches to do that with. So sometimes you'll find that um, <clears throat> you've got a branch that you've had for maybe one or two or three seasons. Uh, perhaps by wiring it, you damaged it. And so now the growth on that branch has, has, has just essentially stopped. Um, and the, the tree has decided to develop into another branch. And then you'll get a new branch that forms. And that branch is almost as thick and as long as the old branch. Um, so at a point like at a time like that, uh, it's easier and better and more advisable to remove the branch that is now slowing in development um, in favor of the branch that is um, is developing rapidly because clearly the tree wants to develop in that branch. And uh, so it's better to work with the tree in that sense rather than uh, be um, attached to the old branch that you've perhaps worked with for a few years. Rather eliminate that one in favor of the new branch. If you need to make that choice, of course, if, you, if the two or three branches are coming out at a very similar point and you can't keep all of them, then el eliminate the one that isn't growing as well as, as the others. I've now removed the branches that were causing problems or would have caused problems uh, and branches that are just facing in a very difficult direction to wire into a more pleasing uh, position. Uh, the next step is going to be to wire the tree. And um, the purpose of the wiring, bearing in mind that we're still very much at the structural uh, development phase of this tree's uh, life as a bonsai, um, and so they, therefore the focus is really on the first few centimeters of the branch. The purpose is really just to get that for the first section of the branch to, to lay in the correct di direction. We definitely won't be keeping the, the full length of many of the branches that will be wired and they will be pruned back to a future growth or just to prune back to stimulate um, growth closer to the interior of the tree um, so that we can get ramification forming uh, closer to the trunk. Um, so this is, this is going to be the next step.
this tree does present uh, a number of challenges. It is, as you can see, quite an old olive and it was originally styled as a bonsai by somebody else. I'm not sure who it was. Um, and there are some problems, well, not problems, but certain challenges with uh, the positioning of some of the primary branches. And, um, you know, so it's always very difficult uh, when you uh, when you work on a tree with a very established structure to make decisions on whether you're going to uh, cut that structure out, that piece of structure, and then rebuild it, uh, or whether to work with it. Um, and it becomes part of the unique characteristics of that tree. Uh, and in a case where it's somebody else's tree, as it is in mine, a customer's tree, it make, makes it even more difficult um, because very often uh, removing structural pieces means that you're going to be left with quite a big void um, where that piece was. So there are a couple of these. Uh, you will notice um, that uh, the apical portion uh, is made up of uh, a structural branch uh, trunk line. Um, that goes or grows directly towards the viewer and then grows vertically. Um, this is not ideal. Um, also, the two, um, the two diverging almost uh, apices uh, is not ideal. One would rather want one of them to be higher uh, than, than the other. So the ultimate apex to be the one that is uh, emerging from the trunk higher up along the trunk. Um, but this, uh, these ones come out at the same, at the same uh, point or at the same height. Um, so it does pre present certain challenges. I think that I'm trying to uh, work around it as best as I can and build an apex which is going to be very rounded. So the it's not going to be symmetrical. It's going to have slightly, it's, it, it, this side will be slightly uh, heavier in, in foliage as well as uh, taller than on the, um, the other side. Um, it does mean that the, this side of the tree will need to be uh, developed a little bit more and the other side pulled back in slightly um, or rested, you know, so not, not, to be allowed to, to develop any further out, whereas this side will be allowed to grow a little bit more freely. Um, but at this point in time, the focus is still building the structure on the tree. And uh, so there are a number of branches which will be pruned back uh, to growth, which I believe will be stimulated as a result of working the tree now. Um, so when um, so the idea is to keep the branches long um, so that they so that the tree looks nicer now, but also um, when you have leaves coming out um, of these branches because it was partially defoliated, um, you will be able to, it'll be, it'll keep the branches stronger if you have a longer length of, of growth um, with more leaves on it. Um, so, and then afterwards you can make those decisions to cut back to um, a growth that is further back in the structure of the tree and then wire those out again. Um, so it's, it's kind of making the tree from the outside in. I'm not sure if that's correct or if there is such a term. Um, but uh, instead of starting from uh, structural branch and then cutting and, and allowing secondary branches and then cutting back that uh, that growth to to two gro to two buds or two dormant buds and then stem and then getting growth regrowth from that and then building your tree from the inside out. Um, yeah, I'm I'm starting with a red a fairly um, um, advanced tree in terms of structural work. Um, where you already have considerable size of canopy that is quite significant uh, and uh, but now wanting the ramification to fill out so I'm trying to stimulate growth on the interior of the tree to to build up the volume of branches that I have or the network of branches that I have to work with. I'm quite excited about the future uh, for this tree especially as we get it to be healthier and uh, olives uh, grow naturally here yeah, in the Western Cape of South Africa. And so they are strong growers and um, 
and I think we're going to be able to get a stunning, highly ramified tree from, from this specimen. So I'm, I'm really excited about its future. I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's video and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And uh, until next time, take care and goodbye.